Yesterday, we spoke about the Ticket Act passing in the House of Representatives and how, once it passes in the Senate, it would force companies like Ticketmaster to show the total cost of tickets up front before you go through all the steps and then land in the final checkout. Now, it's not a perfect fix because they are free to tack on those fees, but it will result in sticker shock to most consumers who will have a much better idea of what they're actually going to pay before being surprised at the end of the transaction. Now, seeing the price up front will definitely help people make more informed purchasing decisions. And it's great that this is moving forward and has already passed in the house. But you know what would be really great? Breaking up the biggest and most universally disliked monopoly in the entertainment industry. And it looks like that option might actually be on the table because while we were filming and editing yesterday's video, news broke of an actual antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation from the Department of Justice. Oh, I love this song. It's all, it's a shame I, could, I would have to pay hundreds of dollars to see this song performed live. Yeah, but, but hopefully, not for long. You know, hopefully some competition can do something about that. Yeah. I mean, can you believe it? Good news for once. Yeah. Very, very rare. Yeah. And it's in regards to one company in particular, a company so universally disliked, so universally hated by everyone that our politicians were able to finally come together and agree that something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So obviously we might be getting a little ahead of ourselves here because the Ticket Act still needs to pass the Senate and this antitrust lawsuit won't immediately fix all the problems that people have with live entertainment, but it's a hell of a start and it's long overdue. Long, long overdue. So let's just get into what this lawsuit means, what it aims to do, and what the DOJ is accusing Live Nation of doing with its monopoly on ticketing and venues. Here's the Associated Press. Filed in federal court in Manhattan, the sweeping antitrust lawsuit was brought with 30 state and district attorneys general and seeks to dismantle the monopoly they say is squeezing out smaller promoters, hurting artists, and drowning ticket buyers in fees. Ticketmaster and its owner, Live Nation Entertainment, have a long history of clashes with major artists and their fans, including Taylor Swift and Bruce Springsteen. It's time for fans and artists to stop paying the price for Live Nation's monopoly, Attorney General Merrick Garland said. It is time to restore competition and innovation in the entertainment industry. It's time to break up Live Nation Ticketmaster. The American people are ready for it. Hell yeah. And I stood up and clapped and I said, sure. How long ago did that merger go through? Uh, over 10 years ago. It's yeah. uh, 2011 or so. Uh, and what at a the time, fucking disaster. We, we talk about it here in a second, but at the time they were like, now don't do anything yeah. stupid. And they proceeded to immediately do everything that would have stopped yeah. the merger from happening. Uh, it seems to be the case with every large merger in recent memory. Is. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, you guys... We promise we won't do that. You do run the risk of uh, becoming uh, a sort of monopoly and all of the bad things that come along with it, so... Pinky, pinky promise. Pinky promise yeah. that you won't do that. And this sets a great precedent for those other companies, too, because they're like, hmm. Now, everyone really fucking hates Live Nation. And it took the government 14 years to get around to figuring out what to do. That seems like we got 14 years of money making in our future, baby. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, anyway, the article continues. The government accused Live Nation of tactics, including threats and retaliation, that Garland said have allowed the entertainment giant to suffocate the competition by controlling virtually every aspect of the industry, from concert promotion to ticketing. The impact is seen in an endless list of fees on fans, the attorney general said. Live music should not be available only to those who can afford to pay the Ticketmaster tax, said Assistant Attorney General Jonathan Cantor of the Justice Department's Antitrust Division. Live Nation, which has for years denied that it is violating antitrust laws, said the lawsuit won't solve the issues fans care about relating to ticket prices, service fees, and access to in-demand shows. Okay, buddy. Okay, what will then? Uh. The Justice Department said Live Nation's anti-competitive practices include using long-term contracts to keep venues from choosing rivals, blocking venues from using multiple ticket sellers, and threatening venues that they could lose money if they don't choose Ticketmaster. Be a real shame. Mm. The complaint said a breakup between Live Nation and Ticketmaster is on the table. And they didn't even mention their latest thing where they're just outright buying uh, venues. Yeah, yeah. Um, just complete vertical integration. But that's, not, look, say what you want, this isn't going to help things at all. 
because we're going to we're going to have to add on a DOJ lawsuit uh, fee because it's going to cost us some money to fight this. And and by the way, we're fighting it for you. We're yeah. the only company standing between normal concert going citizens and the DOJ. Yeah. Yeah. You think this is bad? It would be so much better if um, under Trump, if Trump was running the tickets. <laughs> so. <laughs> so maybe think about that. Those are your options. Yeah, they also add in some interesting facts that seem pretty damning to Live Nation and Ticketmaster's potential defense. Around 70% of tickets for major concert venues in the U.S. are sold through Ticketmaster, according to data in a federal lawsuit filed by consumers in 2022. The company owns or controls more than 265 of North America's concert venues and dozens of top amphitheaters, according to the Justice Department. And how much of that other 30% is AXS? Probably a very <laughs> Probably significant like 29. amount. 29? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got to be very large. And then... Uh, like the only other ticket companies I've seen have been for like really small local events where there's like sort of more yeah. boutique ticket sellers. Web. Yeah, yeah. Brown paper tickets. Brown paper tickets, I don't yes. even know if they're still around, but Maybe that was... Maybe not. A lot of local shows were using that. Uh, and Eventbrite? then the venues got bought by Ticketmaster. Yeah. I've still seen some random Eventbrite and Ticketweb here and there. Uh, did you see the latest on Eventbrite where um, people are just using it to sell, like, drugs? Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> the, hey, the free market will find a way, it's, baby. It's the new Silk Road is just, like, posting uh, drugs, credit card numbers, just oh. uh, all of your illicit uh, gains that you want to offload. You post them on Eventbrite. Well, uh, here in L.A., I'm sure that actually happens here quite a bit, too, but uh, here in L.A., it's really good for seeing professional improv comedy and uh, and very small bands in very small venues. Yes, and. Uh-huh. Uh, also, uh, they add that uh, Live Nation had obviously not lived up to the agreements that allowed the merger of the two companies in the first place. The Justice Department allowed Live Nation and Ticketmaster to merge as long as Live Nation agreed not to retaliate against <laughs> concert venues for using other ticketing companies for 10 years. Oh. In 2019, the department investigated and found that Live Nation had repeatedly violated that agreement. The government then extended the prohibition on retaliating against concert venues to 2025. So they've known that they've been in violation of this agreement for five years, and they're just getting around to doing something about it. Well, that's so, that's why these companies do this shit. Like they, the government is so the fucking The penalty toothless. is so small yeah. and the rewards are so great that it would be a very dumb business decision and bad for their investors if they didn't do such horrible yeah. things. That that's another like again everyone's getting the message like okay, so I if I engage in just blatantly anti-competitive practices, I have roughly 5 years before the government does fucking anything. Well, and not just that, it's like okay, I get away with dicking people over for 10 years, and then the penalty for that is they just say, don't do it again, hey, again. Hey there. They already said, don't do it once, yeah. but this time they really mean it. And I swear, third third strike and we're out. Yeah, buddy, I will pull this car over. Uh, so that's wild. <laughs> it's, it, it's crazy how- Sounds like this is long overdue. Slow and toothless the government seems to be. Um, I hope that something happens now. Again, we don't want to get too overly excited about this, but it is rare to see such strong bipartisan support for something like this. 30 state and district attorneys yeah. generals. And yeah, it'll be harder for conservatives to claim that this is the DOJ abusing power or something because they literally just helped pass legislation against this company with the Ticket Act. It's also pretty low on the list of things that are, I guess, actually you know, vitally important to people in this country, but... There's many, and yeah, there's many, many things that we would love the Biden administration to focus on instead yeah. if we had to choose. But hey, credit where it's due. We're going to take this win. Yeah. Uh, and it's not a win yet, but it's it's something positive. It's not a horizon. W, it's just a V right now. Yeah. It's it's halfway there. Yeah. But yeah, this is, this is a good thing. It's a, it's a satisfying bit of news that everyone seems generally pleased with. If nothing else, it creates a headache for Live Nation and sends a warning that there is currently a hyperfixation on business practices of a company that's been hurting performers and fans for decades. At least now they'll be like, ah, oh, fuck. All right, we've been having it too good for too long. Let's, uh, Let's just ease up a little bit. Let's dial the evil yeah. down a little bit. Yeah. We will take these small victories yeah. where we can get them, so... Now, please just stop charging bands to sell their own merch at your venues. I know this is, uh, I guess, pretty standard industry practice, but it's fucked up. They're barely yeah. making any money, and you're doing fucking nothing. Yeah. They're, you're charging them. This is them. the one chance they get to make some money to survive yeah. on the road. And, and 
By the way, when they're not touring, they're not making any fucking money. So just for the love of God, please yeah. stop charging them they're, to sell their own merch. The band is the reason anyone is in the yeah. building in the first place. And then when they want to sell merch, you're acting like a fucking landlord. Stop it. I've heard the real reckoning, and I guess I'm part of it. The real reckoning is uh, younger generations not buying booze. Yeah. A lot of venues are seeing some struggles with the fact that uh, Gen Z seems completely uninterested yeah. in going out and spending hundreds of dollars on booze they're all every on, night. They're all on Vivance. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll send that in, uh, in the, at the venues next. Yeah. Yeah, right next to the earplugs and the water. Vivance. we gotta, uh, got to make the water even more expensive. That's right. But let's uh. move on now to another sort of update to a story we regularly cover on this show. Artificial intelligence and how it is rapidly destroying everything that once made the internet a fun and interesting place to be. Mm. On our last episode, we covered Sam Altman's open AI begging Scarlett Johansson to voice their AI chatbot because it would bridge the gap between humanity and artificial intelligence or some fucking bullshit like that. Yeah. What they really wanted was the voice from the movie Her. <laughs> the 2013 Spike Jones movie Her. <laughs> Uh, she declined, they asked again, she declined, and they fucking just went ahead and mimicked her voice anyway. Mm -hmm. But while AI getting bad PR from once again stealing directly from creatives is satisfying, seeing people absolutely furious over the newly launched AI search results from Google that display right at the top of their webpage by default is also pretty fun. It's, it's at least interesting to watch a very successful and large company completely nosedive at yeah. what, they, what they built their entire company on. Yeah. Which is good, solid search results. After years of making their product worse and worse incrementally, they've found a new exciting way to make it worse by leaps and bounds. Yeah. No one's going to be complaining about the search results from last month no. when they see what we got now. So, yeah, it is very upsetting that the enshittification of the internet is still running at full speed, but at least people are quickly pointing out the numerous flaws and inconsistencies in a way that makes these large companies look very stupid and short-sighted. Mm-hmm. Not that we really care because any failures will be brushed away as the fault of you, the consumer. It's all your fault for not liking this. But you know, then Google will fire entire teams of people and the stock will be just fine. Don't anybody worry about the stock. The stock is only going up. Oh my God, the market. <laughs> I, I, from the beginning of COVID, I'll, I'll always remember the image of the guy standing on the moon and like a meteor hits the earth and it's like, oh no, the economy. <laughs> Uh, but look, in the meantime, we're all being treated to what Google thinks is the next evolution in technology and something that should definitely be in control of one of the most powerful internet portals to ever exist. All so that people can start making their own delicious pizza at home with an ingredient that professional chefs have been hiding, keeping a secret yeah. for hundreds Trade of years. Trade secret. The AI, they broke the code. They said... Uh-uh. Pull yeah. out that recipe card. Why is my homemade pizza never as good as the pizza from the, the pizza shop? What, what am I doing wrong? Google ruined the pizza industry by letting AI rifle through all their recipe cards. Yeah, Google got to the bottom of it. You gotta put glue in the pizza. Yeah. Come on, yeah, folks. Otherwise, the cheese is just gonna be slipping around everywhere. You see people, yeah. they pick up the slice, the cheese falls right off. Bloop. You gotta glue it down. <laughs> Have, is this the first time I'm hearing about it? No one's been gluing their pizza like I do? Wow. I can't believe this. That's got to be terrible. Yeah, if you want it to look and taste good, got to add the glue. Yeah, it's a look. little bit of Elmer's glue <laughs> makes a whole lot of difference. Yeah. I mean, so honestly, thank you, Google, and thank you, AI, for finally cracking this code. Yeah, great to know. Nobody needs to go out to the to pizza shop anymore. All week long, though, regardless of the pizza, people have been searching for random things and posting screenshots of the answers that Google is very confidently providing with zero oversight or care that what pops up might be inaccurate or even dangerous. So I mean, the glue does say non-toxic, but I yeah. think if you have enough of it, it's probably going to give you a They give Elmer's ache. glue to toddlers. You can eat it. <laughs> and then you can put it all over your hand and wait a while, and then it feels like you're pulling your skin off. Yeah, your hand. satisfying. Mm. So this conversation online seems to have started naturally as Google made the switch to their search results. But people latched onto one tweet in particular to use as a vessel for some incredible screenshots. Yeah, it's the perfect tweet to quote with just an example of AI being yeah. fucking awful. So Stephen Levy of Wired posted an article about how it was time to believe the AI hype and added, not saying it's good or bad or that AGI is within sight, but AI companies are still improving their models and the results are not tricks. They are something powerful that can't be shrugged off. 
The, so, this is powerful. Yeah, Hello. This man, he was asking for it. So yeah, people, of course, quote tweeted that post with examples, so many examples of AI being a complete load of horse shit, including the one about glue pizza and where exactly the AI got that cool tip in particular. Here are some of the best examples so far, starting with that gluey pizza. Someone Googled, cheese not sticking to pizza. And the AI responded, cheese can slide off pizza for a number of reasons, including too much sauce, too much cheese, or thickened sauce. Here are some things you can try. Mix in sauce. Mixing cheese into the sauce helps add moisture to the cheese and dry out the sauce. You can also add about an eighth of a cup of non-toxic <laughs> glue to the sauce to give it more tackiness. <laughs> gotta, gotta make it tacky. Mmm! Mmm! Sounds delicious! Mamma mia! No! They've given away our secrets! I'm out of business! I'm ruined! Uh, so yeah, where did the AI come up with that one? Well, we alluded to it earlier, but it appears to be from a Reddit post by a user named Fucksmith. And this Fucksmith commented in a thread about the problem of cheese not sticking to pizza 11 years ago. And Fucksmith suggested that adding Elmer's school glue to pizza sauce is the trick. And that it will, quote, also add a little unique flavor to the pizza. <laughs> Well, they said it on Reddit, so it must be true. Yeah, well, so, yes, that's the problem, though, is uh, someone just Googling this who isn't seeing where the source is coming from and is just reading the top of whatever Google says. I would hope that no one would be dumb enough to actually put it on there, but, I mean, we've seen people eat hor horse paste for no reason. We have. If you told people that Elmer's glue in pizza would cure some ailment, yeah. they would absolutely do it. Oh, they would be rushing down to... The craft store yeah. to pick up a big old crate and then I keep of that a, white gold. I keep a glue stick in my pocket. <laughs> sniff it every once in a while just in case to clear the sinuses. So incredible work, everyone. I hope we're all happy that Reddit sold its entire history as a website, including all of its user-generated posts and replies, so that we could continue to get inaccurate information from the world's leading search engine. They came together, they worked together, and what they made was beautiful. Just Hilariously inaccurate result, results for a company whose entire basis for existing is search results. Yeah, so uh, thank you to Fucksmith for ruining pizza forever, probably causing at least one or two people to consume a glue pizza. Luckily, at the very least, they instructed people to make sure the glue was non-toxic. Thank mm -hmm. you, Fucksmith. Yes. Here's some other searches and helpful AI answers that we saw from this week. Uh, here's one from Ben Collins, who used to work for NBC News, but now owns The Onion and has changed his name to Tim Onion. Mm -hmm. How many rocks should I eat each day? <laughs> Google's AI replies, according to UC Berkeley geologists, people should eat at least one small <laughs> rock a day. Yeah, it's uh, where I so get all my where, minerals. Where'd they get that idea? Well, this re result appears to come from an Onion article back in 2021, which literally had the headline, geologists recommend eating at least one small rock per day. It said it right there in the newspaper. That's the, that's the paper of note. The Daily Fish Wrapper. Why would they lie? Yeah, this is like the, like, I mean, training AI on like strictly like formal academic material is like one thing. Like, I think you're still going to run into a lot of problems with that. But training it on just the internet in general would appear to have uh, some issues. It doesn't uh, understand what jokes or trolling key are. Key among them, people lie on the internet a uh -huh. lot. Sometimes to have fun, sometimes out of malice. Yeah, and it appears as though the very existence of the onion might be one of the main things that ruins all of this particular AI stuff because it simply cannot figure out what is real or what is satire. Or in the case of the glue pizza, what is just someone trolling in a Reddit comment section. The onion satire seems to have caught on quite well with the AI though because eating rocks wasn't the only inaccurate AI result that people were able to trace directly back to the onion. Here's another. The search was, what color highlighters do the CIA use? And it responds saying that according to a 2022 tweet from the CIA Freedom of Information Act, the CIA has used black highlighters in the past. Oh, that makes sense. And that hopefully we don't have to explain the joke to you. But yes, this appears to have originated from an Onion article all the way back in 2005 with the headline, CIA realizes it's been using black highlighters all these years. It's a good one. Yeah. Uh, I do love that it it kind of like added a bit of legitimacy by being like, oh, someone got this by using the Freedom of Information Act? Yeah. Well, it must be true. They've been hiding this for so long. Yeah. And so many amazing discoveries from throughout the modern era that we've missed out on because some knucklehead down at the CIA 
the? <laughs> Use the wrong marker. Black highlighters, not again. We could have had the cure for cancer years ago. But that's all the best stuff is, <laughs> is, the, is what I was highlighting. I was highlighting. <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> I get back to the drawing board. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, the searches continue. What are the most common jobs for parrots? Some say that parrots can do a variety of jobs, including woodworker, architect, prison inmate, <laughs> cook, toy maker, housekeeper, behavioral analyst, and engineer. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this one is funny because yeah, it's a parrot. But it also could just be common jobs in America in general because of the inclusion of prison inmate. Yeah. I mean. That is a pretty common it's job. It's a very American thing. What's your job? Occupation. Prisoner. Prisoner. <laughs> uh, there was also uh, not, in the animal realm, there was, I couldn't find it again, but it did exist where someone kept asking it if dogs played in certain sports. Yeah. And it was using Air Bud as a reference. And it was like, yeah. yep. Is yep. It, yeah, it was like, has a dog ever played in the NBA? It was like, yes, a dog has played in the NBA. <laughs> it was also like the NFL and like some other sports leagues too, where they got it to say like, yes. Yes. Uh, that's a dog, and it is playing The documentary sports. series Air Bud has featured dogs playing in every ESPN's league. ESPN's 30 for 30 series, known as Air Bud, <laughs> tells the tale of, you're never going to believe what this golden retriever's up to. Uh, here's another one. Search. Blinker not making sound. AI result. If your car's blinker isn't making a sound, you can try these steps. And one of the steps is, replace the blinker fluid. <laughs> and, and yeah, that's one of the oldest car-related jokes of all time. But counterpoint, what if the AI actually is sentient and also loves silly pranks? Oh, maybe it's been talking to Grok. You go down to the auto zone and ask him, where's your blinker fluid? It's a real knee slapper. No, oh, look at him, he asked for blinker. What an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, they, I'm not a car him. guy. I, I thought him. you were trying to help me and instead you were trying to make fun of me. And now you can take that lovable relationship over to the internet. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 that's what they're trying. They're trying to make these AIs into our good friends, and that's what friends do. Sometimes friends lie to you for fun. But in the old days, you'd go in, you'd ask for your blinker fluid, and the AutoZone guy would be like, <laughs> another guy, hey, they must be a group of guys out there laughing, huh? Yeah, bit of camaraderie first day on the job. Hey, come on, let's all get in here and we'll teach yeah. you how to repair this car. Now someone shows up and they're like, can I get some blinker fluid? I searched for it online. They're going to be like, you fucking idiot. You don't deserve to drive a car. Yeah. Get the hell out of my store. Get out of here. Yeah. We will have you towed if you don't leave. Mm -hmm. There's some more silly ones, like, what mammal has the most bones? And the AI telling people that it's definitely the snake python. Snake python? <laughs> Despite the python being a reptile and specifically not a mammal. I think they had, I'm, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the AI where they had to clarify because python is a programming language and it was probably like, oh, oh wait, hold on. I don't want to say something inaccurate. Snake but, python. Yeah. Uh, Kylie Robeson covered this recent development of AI tech for The Verge and mentioned a few of the searches from this week as well. Uh, she also got a response from Google about all this, so let's see what they said when a tech writer pointed out all of these various shortcomings. Google spokesperson Megan Farnsworth said the mistakes came from generally very uncommon queries and aren't representative of most people's experiences. The company has taken action against violations of its policies, she said, and are using these isolated examples to continue to refine the product. Which is, it's kind of insane considering that they are the ones pushing the tech onto the public. Yeah. Despite it clearly not providing accurate results. And as many people have pointed out, Google literally lost $100 billion in value last year when it debuted an AI chatbot that provided factual errors to search queries. That literally happened in February of last year. They got something wrong, and they were like, here's our new AI chatbot. Boom, that's wrong. $100 billion in market value immediately gone. Yeah. Not sure what changed within a year, but you would have a, you, I would assume that losing $100 billion in market value after one fuck-up would have inspired them to wait until the product is ready before deploying it. But then again, there's just no time to wait because every company on Earth, for some reason, has to drop an AI product immediately. You gotta get it out fucking now. I don't even care if it yeah. works. Get it out Ship now. Ship it! They got fucking Wendy's is taking your order with a robot. You can't even order 55 burgers, 55 fries. You can't. And it starts glitching out. Uh, yeah, so regardless of functionality, regardless of con consumer demand, which I have no idea where they think they're getting consumer demand from. Yeah, who was asking for this? 
Uh, the AI releases will continue until we prove that, as a society, we don't yeah. want this. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But moving over to politics, briefly, we'll give you two great clips right off the top, and then we have to get really angry at Louisiana for a second. Louisiana, get back in here! So first, let's check out this clip from Donald Trump's most recent rally in the Bronx, where he goes into detail about this country's biggest hot-button issue, which is putting on pants, apparently. How do you get up in the morning and put your pants on? Where do you put the pants on? I'll explain it to you someday. How do you do it? How do you get up? How do you do it? How can you want to do with what you do? They after you, they're after you. These horrible human beings are after you all the time. And now here's Lindsey Graham in a ra rare scene of almost self-reflection saying that if the international criminal courts were to go after Israel for war crimes, what? what? Well, then hold on. That means that they could come after People like me and the, and the rest of the United States for, for war crimes. What? Which, yeah, th that caused an applause to break yeah. out in the crowd, resulting in Graham angrily saying, yeah, clap all you want. So we, hopefully, together, will find a way to uh, rest our displeasure with the ICC. Because if they'll do this to Israel, we're next. This group tried to come after our soldiers. Yeah, you can clap all you want to. They tried to come after our soldiers in Afghanistan, but reason prevailed. Yeah, I mean, that a lot of this shit does come down to Israel kind of doing what we do, but also being, like, way, like... Way more brazen about it? They're being, like, way more brazen. We're like, we, we do, uh, we, we inflict our evil upon the world in a tactful, plausible, <laughs> deniability sort of way. Yeah. And uh, Israel is, like, their actions are similar to what the U.S. has done in places like Vietnam and Iraq, but I, they're, they're like, just like, yeah, no, we do want all these people to fucking die. You know, having said that, uh, could you even fucking imagine Operation Iraqi Freedom with TikTok reels and Twitter with all those soldiers having smartphones and recording everything? Like, you think the fucking photo where, the, like, the lady's doing the cigarette... You think that's bad? Imagine what they were, oh. what they would have been filming. Over Abu Ghraib. I mean, honestly, it'd probably be better. Abu Ghraib would have gotten shut down within like. Well, a yeah, week. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, uh, like it, wait, we're torturing people. It, We've only been in Iraq for like four days. Yeah, it comes down to like this has probably been happening a lot, uh, even on yeah. the U.S. side. It's just that this comes at a time when. The one I'm curious about yeah. is, uh, ha is it just always been a thing in war when you're like busting into people's homes, you try on all the woman of the house's clothes? I think you put on all the dresses and like pose for your In particular, the IDF seems very Yeah, what's that about? That. Hmm. Uh, yeah, anyways, back over to uh, Louisiana. Like we said, get back in here. Because in the ongoing battle for abortion access and women's health care in this country, we are seeing just insane new lengths that states are willing to go in order to control women's bodies. And the state of Louisiana just made things a whole hell of a lot worse by voting to turn abortion pills into controlled substances, which, if you uh, are in possession of that, would result in massive fines and jail time. And keep in mind, these pills are one of the only avenues left for women to take because of the growing list of states that have made doctor-performed abortion inaccessible or outright illegal. And yeah... As you probably guessed, in Louisiana, abortion is illegal. Yeah, of course. And uh, in that whole area down there, it's increasingly harder and harder to have access to an abortion. So this just puts another barrier in the way and will result in back alley abortions and uh, a lot of other problems that uh, we probably shouldn't have been dealing with right now. Yeah. Uh, also keep in mind that these pills have been available and proven to be safe for over two decades. This is not some new pill that they're putting on the market and everyone's like all of a sudden like, wait, hold on. Yeah. They got an abortion pill now? Like, no, I was in high school when this fucking pill came out. Here's the New York Times. Louisiana lawmakers passed legislation on Thursday to make the state the first in the nation to designate abortion pills as dangerous controlled substances. The legislation, which passed the state Senate by a vote of 29 to 7, God. now goes to Governor Jeff Landry, a Republican who previously defended the state's stringent abortion ban in court as attorney general. He is widely expected to sign it. By classifying the abortion pills mifepristone and mesoprostol as Schedule IV drugs, a category of medicines with some potential for abuse or dependence that includes Ambien, Valium, and Xanax, among others, lawmakers in the state say they aim to curb the illicit distribution of the drugs for abortions. But the Food and Drug Administration does not consider the two medications to have potential for abuse or dependence, and years of research have overwhelmingly shown both pills to be safe. They're... they're the illicit distribution yeah. of the abor abortion? Like, 
No, that's not like a... Previously, you could... It's like over the counter. There's other ways to get it. It's just uh, easier access to stuff like this is better for society as a whole. Um, we're really going backwards in a lot of parts of the country, and that is a choice that those lawmakers and their residents are willing to make, I guess. Very unfortunate. But this is what they got to do to stop people from getting addicted and dependent upon abortion pills. Yeah. Have they ever thought I about how stop. delicious they I'm are? I'm so excited. And I just can't. <laughs> He's referencing the scene from Saved by the yeah. Bell where, uh, <laughs> what's her name? Um, yeah. God, it's been a while since the have seen The tall one. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, she, she gets hooked being on caffeine speed. pills. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's caffeine pills. But yes, the idea that people are just going to be like dropping abortion pills left and right, <laughs> like as if that it, it's just that's such like a dumb snorting it. It's a dumb argument. <laughs> yeah. with, it's pointless to go into because these have been around for two decades. Anyways, it continues because Louisiana already bans most abortions, and because the two drugs are also prescribed for other uses, both can be used during miscarriages, and misoprostol is often used to prevent ulcers and help during childbirth. Hundreds of doctors in the state strenuously opposed the legislation. Oh, how do they know? Doctors and other medical professionals warned lawmakers that the bill would send the false message that the drugs are dangerous and that it could cause delays in treatment for patients with medical needs not related to abortion. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, with just, like, every aspect of abortion that gets banned is also something that has um, other legitimate uses for people who actually uh, are carrying children to term. And don't want to die in childbirth or, or face, like, terrible complications. Are carrying children and then have a miscarriage. There was a, a, a thread that went viral this week. Uh, a, a pretty well-known guy. I, I don't want to... It's a, it's a very personal situation, but his wife had a miscarriage and they live in Texas. And that was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. And resulted in his wife... I mean, he posted this, but his, his wife, like... And him breaking down in tears when she said, get this dead baby out of me. Because it is fucking dead. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's horrible. It's it, it like, like I said, for people who actually uh, want to be parents, every new step in banning abortion makes it harder for them. Mm -hmm. unless, unless the entire pregnancy goes completely according to plan. But that's like almost never the case. And in a lot of cases, things can go really, really wrong. Mm -hmm. And, like, yeah, if you have a miscarriage or something like that, it's like in the past, like, what they would do to treat that would be technically an abortion. Now they can't do that. And doctors are fucking terrified of even, yeah. like, addressing it because, it's like, I don't want to they can lose prison. their license. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, it also makes it harder for patients to get these pills in general, even with doctor approval, because they are treated differently by medical groups and pharmacies when they have this classification. And doctors have to jump through extra hoops to get them in patient hands in time for them to be effective. And that's another thing. You are, this is a very, uh, yeah. it, I need this now kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just increasingly frustrating. And there's no shortage of stories that you can see from just uh, recent times alone where uh, people who aren't getting what Christians would consider to be a classic abortion. Yeah. Uh, it's it, just fucking horror stories. One of the few... Actually, the only Joe Biden 2024 ad that I thought was like, that was really good. They should do more of that. was just like literally people uh, explaining situations like that happening to them. Mm -hmm. um, it would be cool if he would be like, and this is what I'm going to do about that. Yeah. But um, I mean, still effective sure. at, at, at putting eyes on a situation that a lot of people seem to have their blinders on for. Anyway, let's end the episode with some absurdity to lighten the mood up. A bit. Now, first up, the Glizzy King and competitive eating champion Takuru Kobayashi has announced his retirement. Or as one person online put it, he's hanging up that throat. <laughs> Obviously, it's been quite a battle over the years between Kobayashi and Joey Chestnut, but those years have taken their toll. And according to Kobayashi, he is simply no longer hungry. <laughs> Here's New York outlet NBC4 with more. Takuru Kobe Kobayashi, the six-time Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest champion, announced he is retiring from competitive eating over concerns of the damage he is doing to his body, he announced in a new film. In Hack Your Health, The Secrets of Your Gut on Netflix, Kobayashi expressed concern about the damage his career had on his health, and in particular his brain and his gut. 
Ever since I started this career, I've wondered what damage I've done to my body, he said. I want to know how it is damaging my brain and my nervous system. Kobayashi said he thinks he's eaten 10,000 hot dogs during his career. I feel like he's probably eaten more, but that number is that, like, it's that 10,000 10, hours That's thing. how you become an expert. Yeah. yeah. You gotta eat 10,000 hot dogs. I've had at least 10,000 hot dogs. He's truly a master. Outlet Indy 100 adds that Kobayashi's wife explained he, quote, once went three full days without eating because he didn't feel hungry. According to brain scans, the sight of food activates parts of his brain, such as those related to nausea and satiety, as his body feels as though it is in competitive eating mode. That sucks. Wow. <laughs> Imagine seeing a beautiful Chinese meal, a beautiful succulent a Chinese succulent meal. succulent Chinese meal, and you just, you just can't even look at it. Yeah, much like the uh, policeman in Australia, mm -hmm. your brain is pulling you away from that succulent Chinese meal. That's terrible. Yeah. Neuropsychologist Annie Gupta told him, your brain still thinks you're in competition, in a state of eating highly processed foods. Uh, since he no longer feels hunger, his words, he's decided to hang up the throat until his brain-gut connection is finally fixed. And then it's like, well, you want to screw it up again? Yeah. No, stay retired. So, you know, so long, thanks for all the entertainment. I mean, yeah, truly. A champion. What a time to be alive, to experience the peak of competitive eating. Because now it's just going to be... Yeah. Uh, all these studies are saying you can't eat 10,000 hot dogs. Parents aren't, parents aren't going to put their kids in uh, minor league competitive eating, mm -mm. peewee competitive eating, because they're worried about the health effects of the it. The first and last yeah. uh, scholarship for competitive eating Yeah. down it's at the terrible. local college. End it's, of an era, really. Yeah, I mean, it, but luckily, all of us, we, we, got to see it. we got to see the peak. I mean, it's like watching football before helmets. Yeah, back when men were men. Yeah. Wow, someone could die today. Yeah. And that's why I'm here, apparently. Back when there was actual steaks to any of this. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Medium rare steaks. <laughs> that's right. Which also you can't eat anymore because they're bad for you. What? Says who? I don't know. Doctors? What do they know? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Anyway, finally, today, uh, what year is it? Mm. Uh, Belle Delphine is back in the news because she apparently lost $90,000 packing and shipping all of that gamer girl bathwater to her depraved fans a few years back. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Don't worry too much, though. She got her $90,000 back, finally, because it was apparently just being held hostage by PayPal. Despite having the money sitting in purgatory, she still fulfilled all of those orders of her bathwater because that's what professionals do. Yeah. She didn't sit around and wait for this issue to be resolved. No, she got that product in the customer's hands. That's right. The customer's always right. Say what you want about Belle Delphine, but when it comes to business, yeah. she gets it done. A real professional. Yeah. Anyway, this week she was rewarded with all of that money that she was owed by PayPal during the original promotion, which was what, like five years ago? It was a long time ago. Nah. I, I base all of my like timeline on where we were filming at the time, and yeah. I, think we were, I think we were still at Machinima back then. It's like three studios ago. Uh. But yeah, $90,000 worth of bathwater. We're in the wrong fucking business, That's I guess. That's right, yeah. Anyway, with more on this, here's Kotaku. Cosplayer and OnlyFans creator Belle Delphine recently revealed that she earned no money from her 2019, there you go, 2019 viral Gamer Girl Bathwater Feels stunt. like longer than that. Uh, she earned no money from her 2019 viral Gamer Girl Bathwater stunt because PayPal was charging her weird fees and keeping funds for itself. Almost five years later, Business Insider reports that the internet celebrity's biggest L has finally turned into a W, as PayPal has decided to refund her the money that she'd earned after getting called out online. Since it's been a couple of years now, I can finally share the biggest L I've ever taken, Delphine tweeted on May 6th. Not only did I not earn any money selling my bathwater, I in fact lost money doing it. PayPal, without any warning, closed my PayPal account and took the $90,000 that I earned from selling my bathwater. She continued, there was nothing I could do. I tried phoning them up and they just said, sorry, nothing we can do. I knew it would be a better news story to say that I made so much money from selling my bathwater, so I just kept this secret. Ultimately, I'm still glad I did it since it was a really funny time on the internet when it happened. And I still did mail out all the bathwater people bought from me, which I did all by myself. So, fuck PayPal, I guess. And look, that sucks that she had to bully them into giving her the money that she was owed. Yeah. They've done this to a few other people, too, over the yeah. years. And it's, uh, yeah, kind of fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, OnlyFans not not that easy too. A lot of the big credit card companies apparently that was their whole thing with uh, when they wanted to make it family friendly. They're like, yeah, because nobody's uh, yeah. processing our payments anymore. Yeah. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna change the one thing that made our program and website successful. 
and that didn't work out. For yeah, them, they're so. back. They're back to doing porn. Anyways, uh, good for her, I guess. She did have that weird string where she was doing kind of like lowly content, which was. I don't. I don't. I couldn't even tell you what she looks like. I'm just aware of the the bathwater gamer girl bathwater thing. Mm -hmm. I know nothing more about this person. Yeah, I mean, I kind of stopped after that because that was like. What did she get famous for in the first place? Gaming. Okay. Yeah. Well, enjoy your bathwater, you freaks. Well, uh, you say that, yet right over there, sitting there, it says, To Elliot from Amaranth is a bottled fart that you personally requested. <laughs> <laughs> did she sell farts? She did. did. Jesus. I think that was, that was Amaranth. You are all right? a bunch of degenerates. I Look, this goes, this is a tale as old as time. You had the uh, uh, Japanese guys buying panties out of uh, yeah, but vending machines. That's different. I guess so. Anyways, uh, cool. That's the end of the video. Uh, if you didn't think that was weird enough, we're going to have a whole video full of weird news for you coming up real soon on Weekly Weird News. But in the meantime, please check out our most recent videos. We got uh, Tech News Day from, uh, well, no, wait, hold on. Like the video. See, I almost forgot. Yeah, That's why we have, to we have to remind you because even we forget. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what year it is. I don't remember to tell you to like the video. Also, this video wasn't sponsored and we're not selling our bathwater. So if you want to click the join yeah. button, or hit the thanks button, we would... We're making money the old-fashioned way, by begging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please, please put the money in the jar. Uh, but at the very least, like the video, leave a comment below. Now the videos are up there. We got a new Tech News Day where we go over all that ScarJo stuff with AI, plus lots of other AI dumb fuckery. And then a uh, video from earlier in the week. So check both of those out, and we'll see you soon. Bye! Bye!